Hey, this place is off limits. I'm a consultant with the police. I'd like a few words with Namatame-san. May I go in? This is Unit 252, requesting confirmation on an ID. Name of Naoto Shirogane. Huh? Ah, understood. I see. Well, you're on the list. I can give you a few minutes, but I'll have to record your conversation with him for security purposes. Not that I expect you'll get anything coherent out of the guy. He's been spouting nothing but gibberish. I'd like him to accompany me as well. He has no identification, but this is an emergency situation. And he's here in Detective Dojima's stead. Huh? Detective Dojima sent him? I wasn't informed of this. I'll vouch for his identity. Well, I guess it's better than dealing with the man himself. We have our hands full with the transport procedures, so the last thing we need is Detective Dojima running wild. Detective Adachi is busy somewhere, too. Mm. This is Unit 252. Huh? I see. Has something happened? There's something about a suspicious object out in the lobby. Ah, well then, this works out nicely. You should back up your colleagues downstairs. We'll keep watch over Namatame-san. A disturbance in a hospital lobby, after all. It sounds serious. If anything happens, hit the nurse call button. I'll leave the rest to you. Understood. Please be careful. I knew they were undermanned, but I didn't expect it to go this smoothly. Oh well. Wow! There's nothing much inside that suspicious object, so he won't be gone long. All right, and now's our chance to talk to Namatame. It didn't really need to be all seven of us talking to the dude. Like, two of us could have gotten stuff out of him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Namatame-san, there's something we'd like to ask you. <laughs> it's tempting to think that you were the culprit behind this entire case. And to be honest, there are many in this town who hope you are. But we are here to learn the truth. So please, answer our questions. Huh? Seems that he understands what you're saying. What should you ask him? Who'd you throw in first? Did you kill those two girls? Is saving killing people? No. If nobody saves them, they'll be killed. That's why I put them in there. What should you ask him? Who'd you throw in first? Huh? Me? Mm. What should you ask him? Did you kill those two girls? They were killed. I couldn't save them. So one of them was a lady he was having an affair with and then it was Saki Konishi. And he says that the first one he threw in was Yukiko, not those other two. Then tell me if my estimation is correct so far. After discovering the Yamano and Konishi incidents, you realized an appearance on the Midnight Channel meant certain death. Thus, to save her from that fate, you kidnapped Yukiko Amagi. You couldn't let her be killed. So you threw her into the TV, preventing the killer in this world from reaching her. And you repeated the process, as more individuals appeared on the Midnight Channel. It all falls into place. His body is weak, but his mind is sound. He's trying to tell us the truth. Yeah, but if the stuff he's saying is true... There's another killer who murdered the first two victims? Indulge us in a few more questions. What did you ask him? Ooh. Why did you enter the TV? I didn't know. I never thought it would be that kind of place. What did you ask him? Why are the warning letters? Warning letters? What are you talking about? Okay, he doesn't know what they are, and he wouldn't know who killed the first two, I'm guessing. I have no idea. I want to know that, too. As I thought. You... believe me? Did they find him? 
Did they find the one who did such cruel things? Mayumi. Please calm down. Our ability to find the culprit rests on you. We know about the other world. In fact, we're the only ones who can fully understand what you have to say. Only you? We did blame you for everything at first. And we did want to murder you. But now I think we can accept whatever you got to tell us as truth. Please, tell us everything you can, calmly and slowly. You're willing to listen? Do my story? <sighs> All right. Soon after my affair with Mayumi became common knowledge, I returned to my parents' home, as if to run away from the scandal, and I started drinking heavily to drown my anxieties. I hadn't been able to reach Mayumi at all, and that didn't help either. Mayumi, where are you? She'd been disgraced on all the afternoon shows, and forced to resign from the program she was on. I caused her so much trouble. I wanted to at least apologize to her, but I couldn't even do that. I lost the will and energy to do anything. Then, one day, the rumor I heard some time ago came back to me. Since I had nothing better to do, I sat down blankly in front of the TV and watched my own reflection. And all of a sudden, there was Mayumi. Mayumi? Is that you? The Mayumi inside the TV looked as if she was calling to me for help. Mayumi? When I reached out unthinkingly to touch her, my arm disappeared into the... I was so shocked that I lost my balance and nearly fell face first into the TV. I was so scared. I couldn't understand what just happened. I thought maybe I'd gone insane. In the end, I decided to think of it as just a dream, and I went back to the city the next day after finishing work. The next afternoon when I got to work, I was fired on the spot, as I expected. That wasn't what broke me, though. It was Mayumi being found dead. And not just that, but it had happened in my hometown. Namatame is casting his eyes downward painfully. I was dumbstruck. But later on, I remember the image of Mayumi I'd seen that night. Was it not a dream? Could it really have been an SOS from Mayumi? I hadn't touched another TV because the first time was so terrifying, but I decided to try it again. And I confirmed that none of it was a dream. So that image. Was it something Mayumi showed me, calling for help? That's how I felt. And eventually, you learned of the Midnight Channel. Um, yes. I fell I through the TV. When Mayumi was alive, she was chasing a rumor about some bizarre TV program. I'd heard about it before, but I thought it was just an urban legend. But then Mayumi appeared on it, and later turned up dead. The more I thought about it, the harder it became to believe that the two events were unrelated. Soon after that, I came back to Inaba to answer the police's questions. I'd lost my job, and I wanted to know the truth of Mayumi's death for myself. Then, on another rainy night, someone else appeared on the Midnight Channel. It was a girl. She looked like she was calling for help, just like Mayumi. The first thing that came into my mind was, maybe this girl will be the next to die. And that was Saki-senpai. I'd been following all the news about Mayumi, so I noticed right away that she was the girl who found Mayumi's body. And if my hunch was right, she'd be the next victim. I didn't want her to die the way Mayumi did, so I desperately kept watching. I was consumed with the idea of rescuing her. Then, little by little, her image on the screen came into sharper focus. It became sharper? <sighs> How did you find out it was her? After I came back, my father couldn't bear to see me in such low spirits and gave me a job with the family business. I met that girl when I delivered a package to the liquor store. Please don't go near the TV! After agonizing over it, 
I decided to meet her and told her to be careful. Honey, you always want to push the mouse. Like, get away, creep. But that same night, on the TV. She looked as if she was peeing engulfed by some black shape. She was writhing in pain. That's why I warned her. Why won't she pick up the phone? Come on, please. The next day, they found her dead. I knew she was going to be murdered, but I couldn't save her. I blamed myself, thinking there must have been something I could have done. There was no one who depended on me. Nobody at work. Not even my wife. Mayumi was the only one who accepted me for who I was. But she was murdered. And the same person killed another girl. I was... I was beside myself. I couldn't forgive myself for doing nothing. You really did love Miss Yamano. Duh. Yes. From the bottom of my heart. Before I was married, my wife made it big in show business. I was happy for her, but it put a strain on our relationship. I think I can kind of relate. It was around that time when I met Mayumi. She was interviewing our candidate for the next election. She was a big name announcer, but she only worked with local stations, and her attitude towards work was similar to mine. We both came from Inaba, so she was easy to talk to. I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't help getting intimate with her. She gave meaning to my life. Soon after Saki-san was found dead, yet another girl appeared on TV. That was you. She'll be kidnapped next and murdered. I can't let her end up like Mayumi and that other girl. This time, I'm going to do something. My opponent was a murderer who left no clues to his identity. I thought hard about what I could do to protect her from someone like that. I'll never convince her. If she gets suspicious and they arrest me, who'll save her then? The girl inside the TV looked as if she was smiling at me. And that's when it hit me. I apparently had the power to go through the TV screen to the other side. Then, what if I put her into the TV and give her shelter there before the killer gets her? What are you trying to tell me? That it's safe over there? Is that it? The girl inside the TV seemed to smile at me again. And I thought, no matter what kind of place it might be, it's better than being slaughtered. Once the ironic thing down, is you didn't know that you were sending them to their deaths again. anyway. If she's inside the TV, there's no way they can find her. It felt as if everything was starting to come together in my mind. Could it be that Mayumi gave me that power to prevent any more victims from meeting her fate? Was it my mission to save people? But there was a big problem. If I explained the situation to the victim, they wouldn't understand. I had already tried that and failed miserably. It seemed the only thing I could do was to take them away. If that was my mission, I'd just have to do it. Or so I thought. Mayumi. Please lend me your strength. So, since you thought people who appeared on the Midnight Channel would be killed, you kidnapped us in order to save us. Mission? Give me a break! You never stopped and wondered about any of this? I thought I was the only one who could help them. I did call the police, but they didn't believe me. I knew the area well. Thanks to my job, I had a large truck, and I could move around without suspicion. I thought my job as a delivery man would be the perfect cover for my mission. I thought no one else could do it. But, are you telling me that I wasn't saving them? If a person is still within the TV world when the fog appears here, they will die. Beginning with Yukiko-san, the people you thought you had been saving were, in fact, in mortal peril. It was my friends here who really saved us all. I had a feeling that was it. When I went after that little girl and entered the TV myself, for the first time, I had some doubts about myself. 
You refer to Nanakarchan, correct? The police were after me, so I had to get away. But I still felt I needed to do everything I could to save that poor little girl. That's why I went in after her. But the TV world was completely different than I imagined. Such an abominable, grotesque place. I knew that the three of you who I saved went back to your normal lives, so I didn't realize how terrible that world was. The uh, three of us? There's four people I never that you knew. threw in there. You could even get out of that place on your own. No. That's a cowardly way to put it. Like those three and then the fourth one. I'd probably already begun to realize that it was a dangerous place. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have gone to see you all. See us? Wait, are you talking about the concert we did at Juness? Yep. Yes. I wanted to know why the ones I saved were all hanging out with each other and how much you remembered. But in the end, I couldn't bring myself to say anything and ran home. I must have felt too guilty. <laughs> but all the doubts and anxieties I'd been unconsciously suppressing exploded out when I entered the television myself. I thought I was going insane. I probably did. And you know the rest. When I came to, I was lying in a hospital bed. You really were trying to save people. But I ended up doing just the opposite. Oh, what a fool. I always wanted to enter the world of politics and become useful to society. But after losing my job and the woman I loved, all I had left was this power. I convinced myself that world was some sort of sanctuary. And I secretly believed myself to be a hero. I never doubted what I saw on TV and believed everything was as I wanted it to be. I didn't think for myself at all. That's why I couldn't protect them. I'm to blame for all of this. What's done is done. I suppose so. But the things I've done are too serious to be brushed aside like that. I have no intentions of running away from my crimes. I'm prepared to face the consequences. Kidnapping is already a serious crime. And on top of that, I put all those lives in danger. It was like involuntary manslaughter. If, some, if one of them actually died, it would be involuntary manslaughter. And none of them actually did die, but kidnapping is serious. I'm sorry. The Midnight Channel and the Other World? You can hardly be blamed for failing to understand them properly. We must apologize to you as well. Had we let our emotions blind us to the truth, we would have piled all the responsibility on you. I guess from your point of view, people did stop dying once you started saving people. The more you did it, the more you really believed you were preventing their death. I'm such a joke. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little tired. What, what are you all crammed in here for? My apologies. We'll be leaving now. Wait. I beg you. Please, find whoever's behind this. You children are the only ones who know about that world. So what happened? Not a whole lot. We just listened to his story. Um, I did give the correct answer so the game would continue. It maxed out full rank, started out judgment rank. And he just told us that... Um, he thought that because he saw people on the Midnight Channel that those people were going to die, which was true. And he thought by throwing them into the TV, it allowed him to hide them from the killer. But it was the ex exact opposite because the TV world is hellacious and where people actually go to die in this town. Not like they go to die, but like that's how they were dying in the first place. Like being thrown into the TV world in the first place is how the killer was killing them. So he didn't know that... Uh, he was actually doing bad thing and he's not actually guilty of like any murder he's guilty of kidnapping people but he's not guilty of murder it's all clear now he never committed any murders it was another party who threw the first two victims into the tv you've taken another step toward the truth
Yeah, so this is pretty much the end, I think. Like, the Judgment Archon is just Get gonna increase over and over, so that means that, like, this is pretty I much you, the end. No more social links, though. We can't have anything else happen. Sheesh. Better not see you rascals here again. We got all the info we need, sir. Monaco-chan looks like she's in pain. She's fighting for dear life. This was the last place we saw Teddy, right? He was so worried about her. How can he flake out like this when we have to find the real killer? The police consider the matter closed. We'll have to do all the investigation from here on out. Let's revisit Saki-san and Miss Yamano's incidents and see if we can turn up fresh details. But it's been over six months. Wouldn't the trail be cold by now? I know, but we can't give up. We're the only ones who understand what's really going on. And you never know. People might remember Ooh, some things me. now because they've had so much time to think about it. Let's split up and talk to people all over town tomorrow. We'll meet up in the evening to discuss our findings. Oh, so I, I can actually can do stuff. About Teddy too. It's an old-fashioned investigation. Throw down tomorrow, y'all be going out to talk to people in town. Will this finally help uncover the information that will lead you to the true culprit if you decide to go home early today and get some rest? Oh, okay. So is school over as well? Or is nobody going to school because, you know, the world's a haunted hellhole? You should rest early. Okay. Yeah, I guess we have the day off. Today is the day the school was founded, so you have the day off from school. You need to investigate the town. You wonder if you'll be able to gather the information you need to catch the killer. Well, shoot. Instantly leave. No watching the TV, no nothing. Fog's pretty thick today. I go out on walks and I can hardly recognize the surroundings. It's pretty sad, ain't it? But hey, thanks for stopping to talk to me. That lamp asked you about? You still look- No. There's more important things. I'm sure I have to go back in the TV world for, like, something else. And if everything is still here at the end of that, then I'll help you out. My daughter was in an accident. On top of that, it was a hit and run. Nobody could tell what kind of car it was because of all the fog. Sheesh, this is horrible. Thankfully, she wasn't hurt too bad. But she was right, wasn't she? The fog is dangerous. I need to start letting everyone know. Starting to let everyone know. Fog isn't clearing up, is it? Isn't that just a little strange? My wife is all business as usual, but I'm a little worried. By the way, do you need anything? About those murders. I'm sorry, all I remember is that something happened. I know it was pretty shocking, but what I what can I say? A lot of times passed. What help are you, sir? Man, real Silent Hill vibes. I like it. Did you need something? About those murders. Now that you mention it, the town was all abuzz last spring. You remember that, don't you? What is it? The fog make everybody forget? Is that what the stupid twist is? I mean, it was a long time ago. I mean, <laughs> hello. Two murders in this small town where everybody knows each other and you just expect us to remember? <laughs> what a crazy person you are. Can I help you? About those murders. Eh, the incident last spring? I don't remember anything from that long ago. I'm going to be studying for college entrance exams next year, so I've got no room for useless information like that. Wow. I hate how it's foggy every day now. This is the season for winter vegetables, too. What will I do if the fog really is poison? All my vegetables will go rotten. This is all because not enough people eat their veggies. If only my son would clean his plate, he'd... Okay. You find anything? Saki, Konishi, Mayumi, Yamano. There should be a community between the two. Surely with some witnesses. Any scrap of data could be useful, no matter how small. Okay. Mayumi. Well, they were both at the Amagi Inn, but, like... That's not a location we can go to. Hmm, can I help you? About those murders. That incident last spring? I still wonder what happened. It was a pretty big deal, wasn't it? I had almost completely forgotten about that. Wow, I must be getting old, huh? Yeah, it's weird that everybody's, like, forgetting. What is it? Uh, what are you talking about? Did all that happen just last spring? Wow, it seems so long ago, huh? Who's gonna remember something from that far back, anyway? Makes me feel like we're still inside the TV. Finding any clues about the killer. No, he's whining about it now. So I'm starting to get that info. The fog has gotten... This 
fog has got to be some kind of biological weapon. It's a conspiracy. You know who I heard it was? Juness. Yeah, that's right, Juness. The country of Juness is staging an all-out attack on Inaba. Okay, that guy's clearly insane. Information on what happened before we entered the TV world. Hmm. You know about that first murder? I wonder why it happened. Let's ask around and gather as much information as we can. I'll see you later. The strange fog gets put out the pilot light from my forge. That's that's unforgivable. This fire is what allowed me to stage off the cold and allow this with my infinity blah blah blah. I have to close my shop down in the middle of winter like this. How am I supposed to make a living? Yeah, I don't know, man. Mega buckler. Yeah, just sell it all. That's a prime steel. Kenka, Suzumushi, Demon Shield, Onigawara, Raging Bull, 44 Anaconda, Gehenna Claw, Dragon Scale, Mythos Robe. Just a straight up increase, so there we are. I tried talking to this old guy earlier, but he didn't even see me. What with the fog and all, guy just ignored me and walked off. I know if I, I know it wasn't personal, but it kind of hurt. Damn fog, hurry up and go away. Like, did you ask him any questions? Ah, welcome. I've been feeling really poor recently. You need to be careful too, the fog. There's something about it that just gives me a bad feeling. Do none of you have any useful information? No, and quit asking. Hey, listen to this. Rosette came and spoke to me. This is a once in a lifetime thing. I asked her for her autograph and what type of guy she's into. Anyway, what do you want? I'm sure you can see how busy I am. Didn't they capture the suspect and put a lid on that case? Aren't you done asking questions? Good, now go away. I'm very busy talking to Rosette right now. How many people actually remember him? That guy, Bear Sue from Juness. Somebody's name today. That's a lot of many other people. Where the heck could he have gone? Should try calling his name again. Mika Chan. That's on the off chance. Alright, so... Did you get any leads? Everyone just forgets it so easily, but rumors they hear from the friends and TV get remembered for a long time. Why is that? It's been a while since the first two incidents. Do you think we'll find anyone who still remembers them? The fog sure is dark and creepy, isn't it? Oh, you have a question for me? A little while ago, they said that a suspect had been caught. It was in the newspaper. It was that Namatama son, right? I remember seeing him around town from time to time. Oh, how horrible. It really does frighten me. I don't recall seeing any other strange people, so I'm sure he's the culprit. Is it true that there were no other suspicious individuals? Someone else about this. Find coal? Listen, dude. There isn't anyone around like that in this town. I don't know the kind of kid at Jim Kuhn's house. Oh, I almost forgot. Did you get that fine coal? No, dude. Quit asking. Have I seen any other weird people aside from Namatama-san? Hmm, uh, nope, I don't think so. The fog is people? Or, like, this town is like a Silent Hill type thing where people forget because of the fog or something. I don't know. There's, I don't know. We'll see what's happening. So far, it's a little hard to piece together. Even if it is Adachi, which I'm kind of almost certain it is. Um, it would be interesting to see, like, why the fog makes people forget and junk. 
Since all I hear from everyone is poison, poison, I've gotten kind of freaked out too. I wonder where I can buy a gas mask. I need to get one. Everyone else has one already. Okay. Oh, look at this guy. You must remind me when I'm outside and I'm home and see my newspaper emerge. Thought I'd stay out here and watch the sunset. Of course, I'm going to watch TV when I go home anywhere. Even then, I couldn't see the sunset because of this fog. Oh, hey, it's so depressing. Do you have a question? No, maybe you're more depressed. Whole thing is over. Okay, so I have to ask about suspicious people. It's a small town. If there was anyone suspicious, there would be rumors going all over. But at least I haven't heard any news of rumors just like that, so I say there's no such person. Taking your motorcycle. Literally, this all this dude talks about is motorcycles. I hate that guy. Least helpful person in the entire game. 